Welcome. I'm Perialis, and I am starting my second Let's Play. Uh, this time I'm going to be taking a run through a game called Space Rangers HD, which is the high definition remake of a game that came out in the mid 2000s uh, called Space Rangers 2. So, what is Space Rangers in general? It is a sort of a top down elite style game. It bears a lot of similarity to. Well, it, it sort of falls under that fly, fight, trade type simulation, but it's all top down. It's got a really cool sort of graphic style, and it's another one of those games that hasn't really gotten a ton of recognition. I've, there's a couple of Let's Plays up on YouTube and things like that, but it never really got much recognition, at least not outside of Russia. Uh, it is a Russian game, and... Uh, so it seems to be fairly popular there, just judging by the traffic on the Russian language board, which unfortunately I don't under understand a word of. But at least in North America, it's never really been all that popular. So with that said, I'm going to get started with a new, new character here. Uh, name myself Imperialis, and there are five different races you can choose from. You've got the Maloks, who are a warrior race. They're kind of dumb, but uh, very aggressive. They tend to be good at some of the more military-style games. The Pelings, who are an amphibious, sneaky... Yeah, they, they, they're, they're basically the, the jerks of the coalition of five races. Um, really good at espionage, that sort of thing. The Fae, who are the scientists. They're the, they're the smart guys that do a lot of the scientific research and stuff like that. And then the Gal, who are a sort of nation or a race of philosophers. They, interestingly enough, are actually better at technology than the Fae. They apparently taught the Fae everything they knew, which, okay, that works, I guess. And then you've got the humans who are kind of in the middle of everything. The most relevance that this has is actually in terms of equipment. Generally speaking, Gal equipment is the most expensive and the most reliable, whereas Maylock equipment is dirt cheap, but tends to be quite large in terms of size, and you'll spend a lot of money and time fixing it. So I'm going to play as a Fey, and I'm going to play as a Merchant. Um, I like starting as the Merchants just because the first chunk of this game, it does involve a lot of flying around in circles and trading. So, now I'm going to muck about with my difficulty. Actually, I'm probably not, because I kind of have it set the way I already like. So, I keep pirates on weak. Uh, pirates are sort of the sixth faction within the game that you can actually end up joining. But if you make them too tough, they, they become way, way too powerful, and the coalition ends up being completely outclassed by them. And you end up with an entire galaxy covered by nothing but pirates, which is a bit of a pain. The price spread I set on big. It uh, affects the, the overall difficulty for the human player by cutting down on the amount of trading that you need to do to actually start to turn a profit. It makes it a lot easier to do that sort of stuff. Scientists, I set on stupid. And I do this basically to, in my opinion, improve the pace of the game. If you set them on genius, 
they're going to be developing really, really advanced weapons and ships and things like that far t too early in the game, at least in my opinion. They, um... Uh, by setting it on stupid, it s slows down the progression, and by the time that cool new weapons actually start showing up, you have a reasonable chance of being able to afford them, too, which is the other advantage of having them stupid. Repairs I set to frequent, so my... Um, the equipment on the ship breaks down more often, you need to spend more time and money repairing it. But this also affects everybody else. All of these settings affect everybody else. So if there's a NPC trader running around, he's going to be able to turn a bigger profit because of this big price spread. And likewise, if there's pirates flying around that are constantly getting shot up, they're going to be having to spend a lot more time and money repairing their ships. Uh, equipment affects how uh, how quickly new equipment is adopted. Whenever new equipment gets adopted, it'll first be available on the science stations and the ranger stations, because they do most of the research. And then it starts to filter down to the other planets. And I might actually set this to junk. It, it I like having it over on this end because it makes it easier well it, it, it makes it so that when you find something cool it is actually something cool that somebody else won't necessarily have if you if you send it down to tough which I suspect is a typo I suspect it's meant to be lots it means that as soon as the scientists develop something new and shiny all of the planets are going to pick it up like right away, but, and very quickly the the new stuff becomes obsolete much much faster. So I'll set it to junk, and so shops sell only outdated junk. Well, maybe I'll leave it on poor. So shop very few new items in shops. Quests. This only affects me. And again, I have it set on light just so I can get through the early part of the game a bit quicker. So quests are easy and well paid. And if you set it all the way up here, then it's just that much more of a grind at the beginning of the game, which, especially in a Let's Play, is something you want to avoid. Black holes only affects the player. Uh, the player and the dominators are the only ones that use them. The dominators are kind of the big bads of the, of the game. This robotic artificial intelligences that want to conquer the universe. Um, but I set them on numerous because this is another cool way to get some really neat equipment. Anytime you go through a black hole and you fight your way through it, uh, you get something neat and something that oftentimes isn't even available in any of the shops. Like, it'll never get researched or anything like that. So having lots of black holes around is kind of neat. And I really like the little arcade game that you do with it. And then luck is, I set on fine. Um, just so, I, I, in all honesty, I don't really know what it affects. So... That is my difficulty settings. And now I need to start figure out my starting skills. I'm going to start with base mobility because it increases, well, it decreases the damage you take when you get shot, which is always a good thing. And then the other one's base accuracy will increase the damage that you do shoot someone so they compare accuracy versus mobility values and it provides a bonus or a penalty anytime a ship is hit depending on which one's higher. Uh, technology increases the number of probes that you can operate and probes are what you use to scan unexplored planets and get extra resources and extra equipment that way. Commerce is pretty straightforward it just affects the buy sell prices and charisma here is how many oh what does it do it, it affects the payout for quests the higher your charisma is the better payout for quests 
can be. And so I'll usually crank that up a little bit, but it's not really essential. And then leadership affects the number of pilots that you can have basically hired to follow you around. Then, get to pick some starting equipment. And again, I'm pretty standard here. I've got a couple of things that I know I always like, and the first of those is a better engine. It lets you go faster, it lets you do all sorts of handy things like that, and more speed is always good, especially with the trading and with some of the quests, because a lot of the quests are kind of fetch quests and they have a time limit. And sometimes that time limit can be really, really tight. So getting your engine cranked up to something pretty powerful is always a priority in this game. And then I also go for the missile launcher. The missile launcher is one of the better weapons, at least at the start of the game. The downside to it is it is expensive because you have to pay to reload it. But it... It's a good start. Well, it's a good weapon to start with a little bit buffed up. Other than that, you can start with a better fuel tank, better radar, a better scanner. So, radar just affects the range that you can scan ships at. And scanners, depending on what their shielding is, you can actually poke into their ship and see what's going on in there. Uh, what kind of weapons they have, what kind of cargo they're carrying, what their shields are like, all that sort of stuff. Droids repair your ship. That's a droid there. Grippers are what you use to pick up things that are floating around in space, which becomes much more relevant a bit later on when you're f actually fighting the Dominators and doing a lot of combat because you'll be wanting to pick up uh, the Detrius that's left over after a fight, especially with the Dominators because you can sell it for massive amounts of money and Dominators also drop nodes, which is a whole other kind of sub-currency within the game. Shields, pretty self-explanatory, they just block a certain percentage of damage. Industrial laser is a terrible weapon that you might use a little bit at the very beginning of the game and then proceed to get rid of. Fragmentation cannon is a short-ranged gun that does pretty reasonable damage, particularly at the beginning, and it's cheap to operate. They, they tend to be quite inexpensive. The Flux is a laser type thing, it's a longer ranged version, a longer ranged and slower firing version of the Fragmentation Cannon. And then the Triton is a weapon that does a little tiny bit of damage but also slows the enemy down. So those are the options for starting. Um, oh, one thing I haven't talked about is the different starting setups. This just affects your starting ship and your relationship with the other races. So for... Uh, the warrior, the uh, Fey warrior, everybody likes him, but he's broke and he's got good weapons. The mercenary has a small ship with missile weaponry, no money in the bank, and the Maalox and Palings both hate him. The merchant, which is the one I'm going to be playing, has a big ship in terrible condition with a slow engine, which is part of the reason why I upgraded the engine. And everybody except for the Maalox like him. The Corsair is uh, broke, hate, the gals hate him, and the pirate is broke but has a whole bunch of drugs, and absolutely everybody except the Palings hate him. Um, the different races also all have different sort of starting setups as well but like I said I like the I like the Fey Merchant so that is the setup so we'll get started here and it's gonna take a little while to load in here and while it's doing that I'll let you read it but I'm gonna talk so one of the things I really really like about this game is just how much diversity there is to it you, you can fly around and trade and fight the Dominators and everything like that, but there's, especially within the quests, there's so much different stuff. There's a little real-time strategy game within it where you build and command robots to try and 
finish cleaning up planets that Dominators have taken previously taken over. There's if you go into the black holes, it's kind of like a little arcade shooter, almost. Um, the there's text quests. There, like yeah, like I kid you not, like Zork style text quests where you need to or choose your own adventure style text quests where you pick what you want to respond to and go through the quests that way. Um, there's all that sort of stuff and it's got a truly living world to or a truly living universe if and, and you'll you'll get an idea of it particularly with the trading because there's a whole bunch of other ai ships flying around doing their thing trading fighting all that sort of stuff and it's incredibly dynamic like you can conceivably just let this game play itself and just watch what happens and so like just as an example and you'll see it you'll see it when I actually start playing but you'll sometimes see news reports that there was a, a agricultural crisis and there's a famine on a planet and that means that food prices on that planet are gonna skyrocket so if you can load up on food fly over to that planet you can make a pretty decent profit but if you're not quick about it everybody else wants to do the same thing so there's going to be a whole horde of ships flying there with food and if you're one of the last ones to arrive you're going to realize that oh the the market's been completely flooded and now i'm selling this food at a total loss so then you've got a ship full of food and know where to sell it to and likewise sometimes there'll be a surplus of something and so you'll be all like oh sweet there's a surplus of machinery on this planet and so you fly over there only to realize that somebody else has gone in and cleaned it out entirely and there's like two left which means that you've put wear and tear on your ship, you've wasted fuel, you've wasted time, all that sort of stuff flying around to try and turn this profit, but somebody else beat you to it. And because this is really dragging on here, I'm actually going to pause the video briefly and wait for it to finish loading in, and then I will rejoin you after the game starts here. Okay, so welcome back. Um, finished loading in here, and this is where you start out. He gives a little bit of backstory here. On behalf of the Interstellar Coalition and the Pegasus Ranger Center in particular, I would like to thank all the true patriots in rolling into the Ranger Force this in this hour of hardship. We all remember that 200 years ago, it was the Rangers who put an end to the Cleason War that threatened the very existence of all five Coalition civilizations. That war was a lesson to us all, strengthening the unity of the Coalition. Thanks to this war, whatever misunderstandings arose in the past two centuries were resolved swiftly and peacefully. This long-standing peace was broken six years ago when, an unidenti when unidentified aggressors attacked a science expedition from Earth in a remote star system. Uh, I'm going to let you finish reading that, but backstory, backstory, backstory. And respond on here. Dire times are upon us. And he talks about how, oh, these Dominators are attacking, and then all of a sudden, pirates began attacking us, or a group of sort of anarchists aligned themselves to this uh, un unidentified pirate leader who's going around and mucking things up. Can I go fight now? Now, I am going to do the training. It gets a little bit of starting money, which is always nice, and if you end up playing this, you'll probably want to go through the tutorial as well, so I want to. I'm a rookie pilot, and I would like to familiarize myself with the new equipment. So, we are happy to provide you with all the knowledge a ranger needs. Your first mission will be a simple one. Take off from the ranger center and land on your home planet of Epintech. An experienced instructor will be waiting for you at the spaceport. Very good, I'm on my way. So, now this brings us to the... 
start screen. Uh, you can see the status of your ship. My hull's in good shape. My fuel tank is in terrible shape. My engine is in critical condition, so that's not good. Uh, so I guess you'll get to see me doing some repairs right off the bat. So to do that, I need to go in. I need to look at my ship itself. And down here, you can see my total money. I've got 4,000. So this is the starting engine, and if you remember when I created this guy, it said he had a engine that was in terrible condition, and this is it. But, you'll notice over here in storage, I have a different engine. This is the bonus that I started with. So there's the diving engine, it's got a top speed of 400 and a hyper jump range of 17 parsecs. This, however, the engine that I wanted to start with, has a top speed of 490 and a hyper jump range of 25. So I can drop that in instead, and now my ship is in much better shape than just sell the junky one. And here's that missile launcher that I started with. So, strikes a target with homing missiles inflicting 10 to 18 damage each. The number of missiles, there's 30 that it carries in its magazine, so we'll equip that as well. Other than that, I have an industrial laser. This is one of those cruddy little weapons that I told you about at the beginning. And I'm actually just going to sell it. There's no point in carting it around. My fuel tank is in terrible shape. My fuel tank has a capacity of 20, but my engine could jump up to 25. So my fuel tank is going to be here at least, because it, it only holds 20 units of fuel, whereas I could conceivably jump up to 25. But I'm going to use, well, let's take a look, see if they have, and then I've got a basic gripper, a basic radar. That's about it. Uh, but I am going to just take a quick look at their equipment store here and see if they have a be better fuel tank. So they do. They've got two fuel tanks, one that will carry up to 49 and one that will carry up to 45. And you can see the equipment manufacturer in the lower right of the pop-up there. So this one is a Fein fuel tank and that one is a Paling fuel tank. Now, the other thing that you'll see there in the lower left is the size. So, the mysoplasmic fuel tank takes 51 space in the ship, basically, and the protovascular fuel tank takes 48. So let's take a look back at my ship here. This only requires 20 space. And my overall as much available space as I can. So I'm actually not going to upgrade my fuel tank for now at least. I'm going to wait and see if smaller and easier to use or easier to fit in the ship. The radar here is actually very very large. It's 60 as is my gripper. So getting those smaller is going to be a priority for sure. Just take another quick look here, see if we've got better radar. So that's significantly smaller and it's a better radar, but it costs 3,000 space bucks. So don't necessarily want to do that right away. And we've only got one gripper, uh, which I don't. It's a good gripper overall, but again, it's quite expensive, and it'll cost almost all my money. So we'll just leave it as is for now. That stuff's fairly easy to upgrade later on. Now from here, there's all sorts of different stuff that you can do. You can get uh, micromodules, which are little upgrades to your... They attach to other equipment, and they improve the, improve the performance of it in one way or another. Uh, for that, you need to trade in nodes, which you get from killing dominators. And they want me to infiltrate the pirates to try and learn about them and figure out how we can go about defeating them. That's a whole subplot thing that they added in the HD version. In the original Space Rangers 2, and even the Space Rangers 2 reboot, um, because this is actually the third release of the game. Uh, in the original one, 
the pirates weren't really a faction to, in and of themselves. You'd occasionally get them, there'd be a pirate base and some pirates flying around in a given system, but they weren't organized the way that they are in the HD version. Ranger rating is just how rangers are ranked. You can see the whole shebang here. So right now I'm ranked 53 out of 53 rangers. I've done absolutely nothing. Compare that to a guy like Amadek, who's killed 53 Dominators, two Pirates, liberated three systems, and he's the rating one Ranger. Uh, responsibilities of a Ranger... Basically, you are a privateer. You are free to operate how you see fit, where you see fit, and when you see fit. And then you can also improve the different bases and stuff like that. You can do that with all sorts of different bases. You can, you can invest in projects and it, it's crazy how much depth there is to this. But for 10,000 credits, they could install new equipment on the base and overall improve the performance of it. But let's go get the tutorial started here. Might actually transfer this over to my solid state drive just to get it to load a bit faster with Bandicam running in the background. Probably not a terrible idea. And again, it's just because the, the, the overall universe is so incredibly complex. It, it, it takes a while for it to load in and running the recording software in the background isn't helping, so... Take the opportunity to drink some coffee, though. Now, I'm not 100% sure how exactly I want to do the trading and stuff like that. Because it really is essential. Like, if I were to go in and I were to start trying to fight things right off the bat, it would just... I'd be get demolished. It would not end well at all. But, by the same token, the trading is kind of boring. So, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that. I might might have to uh, put cuts in the video or something like that. Anyhow, this is the main screen. Uh, you've got a little mini-map up here. And the little yellow circle is my radar range. I can't see anything beyond that, so if I were to look at him, it says object is outside of radar range. See the different planets and things like that, and it is turn-based. Um, everything takes place in individual turns. There's the station that I just took off from. So, Ranger, Stage, Ranger Center Pegasus. Over here, it looks like there must have been a fight or something like that here. Because there's some stuff lying around. There's a hyperliquid fuel tank. Some... Technics, which is a trade resource thing. Uh, equipment, like heavy industrial type equipment, stuff like that. So I'm going to pick these up because, I mean, hey, it's an extra few hundred space bucks to get started with. So to do that, I mouse over them, and it'll turn into a little grabby hand. I click on it, and then a little grabby hand shows up there. And then I pilot close to them. So, and it'll, t like, if you click here, it'll tell you how many turns it takes to get there. And if you look really closely, you'll see there's a slightly larger dot representing one turn. Another slightly larger dot representing the second turn. So... Spacebar pauses and unpauses and lets you move through time. And then I'm supposed to go to the planet... Epinthak, or Epinthak, and 
and if you click a long distance, it'll just t so it's going to take me seven turns to get there, seven days to get there. And once I press space now, I'll finish collecting that little bit of technical stuff. Uh, you'll notice I left a cistern back here. It just carries a bit of fuel, which I don't really care about all that much. It's only worth a hundred, and yeah. But now when I press space, it'll just automatically fly, and I can sit back and let it do its thing. Anytime I can pause it, and it'll pause at the end of the, each day. And... Oh, and down there you can see some minerals, so it must have been an asteroid or something blew up there. I could conceivably pick them up as well, but... The minerals are pretty worthless. And picking up those... Mechanical th things will give me a chance to show off the trading screen here. So this is the trading screen. You've got eight different resources, or eight different things you can trade. Food, medicine, alcohol, minerals, luxuries, technics, or mechanical things. Uh, the name technics bothers me. And again, it's a lot of this comes from the Russian translation of it. Uh, it's a good translation overall, better than the original version of it. The original had some very, very funny moments, actually, but um, just because of translation issues. Uh, weapons and narcotics. So you'll notice that with the alcohol, weapons, and narcotics, there's a little red square with an X through it, and that means they're illegal here. So if I were to buy or sell them, it would degrade my reputation on this planet and potentially end up with me getting landed in jail, which would... It, it, it turns into another little choose-your-own-adventure thing where you try and shave time off your sentence, and the rest of the universe keeps doing its thing while you're sitting in jail. Again, like I was saying, this game, you can almost just be an observer in it. But anyhow, I'm going to sell these... Technics. Um, they were free for me to pick up. It does say a purchase price of 68, but uh, I picked them up for free. So I can sell them and earn myself about 800 bucks, which is nice. And then I also picked up an extra little fuel tank here, which I don't really have any use for. It's. Well, because you see old tank is made by the Gauls, whereas this one's made by the Feans. And the Gauls equipment tends to be superior to the Feyan. So I'm actually gonna sell my Feyan one and gas up that fuel tank and equip it instead. It's the same size of other fuel tank, but that extra bit of uh, really put the reliability of equipment on, uh, or the repair frequency on frequent. Anyhow, uh, my timer just went off, so I'm actually going to put a cut in here, and I will see you after the jump.